Hello, I'm Mike C. from WWTF, The Gamer Show. And I'm Fred Y. And hey, we're trying to get to E3 2016, but we need you guys' help. Yeah, please go to Twitch TV backslash The Gamer Show. There you can donate however much you like. We're going to ask those questions that you want to answer. Don't forget to go to the website, log in as a member so you can enter in the chance to win all the free games and all the free prizes. Thanks for tuning in to do with the facts. The Gamer Show. Hello everybody, I'm Mike C. And I'm Fred Black. Hey, on today's show we're going to be discussing retro gaming versus uh, new generation gaming. And on today's show we have two very special guests. Uh, one, our cameraman Quincy, and we have Harold. He's ranked number three in the world on speed runs on Zelda, and he's ranked number seven in the world on speed runs in Castlevania. Uh, welcome to the show, Harold. Hey, thank you all. Question for you. I have all the new gen and last gen consoles, right? But why am I still going back to the older generation consoles? Because I'm not getting any type of excitement from right. games that's, that's here right now. Right. Like the Order 1886, it's not a replayable game, though it looks beautiful. Right. It's, oh, it's a beautiful game. game, but it's not a replayable game. And I have much more fun playing retro games versus today's uh, generation game. So, I mean, wh why is that? The reason I would say has to do with the replayability for one, also um, uh, variety in your games. On the new gen systems out now, that first you're at first and shoot, you got a couple forward stamp look all identical. Race games that look very identical. But you go back to the NES and Super you have you have great uh you know, platformers, you have great RPG, you drive games, there's so much variety and game and uh, trying to do better each time finding the sun out your uh, quest to do it like on Fantasy two, another great game and you just grind at it for hours and you don't have to watch hours ago while Yeah, they, they I think uh, they're failing on trying to make everything like a like a movie experience. If I want a movie experience I go to the movies. I don't want the same thing at at the house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, that's why I really feel where they're lacking it. Right, yeah, again, 18, the order 1800, it was more of a movie mm -hmm. than a video game. Right. Like, I can sit down and I can pop in Super Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. or I can pop in Bad Dudes, or I can <laughs> even go back to the classics, arcade classics, yes. Double Dragon. Yes, sir. And I can replay that over and over again, you mm -hmm. know, and that has no uh, net play. I mean, it has multiplayer, some of these games, but it doesn't have any type of DLC. I'm just pretty much bored with a lot of the stuff that's coming out right. for these next gen consoles. So, like, okay, um, Harold, what, you remember the days that you brought a game, you took it home, you didn't have to worry about getting download <laughs> the content. You could just <laughs> put your game in and play it. And don't have to worry about right, it. Right, right. Supposedly the day one patches that yeah. every game needs in order to upload. I, I don't understand that. It seems like these games we're getting are not, in, uh, not complete first. And then we got to get all this other information. Or either pay for stuff that's already in the game. I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Another thing about the price of the game, too. Uh, look at the cost of living. Okay, back when I intended the game, let's say you bought Super Mario 3. It was $4.99. Well, you go buy a new game now, it's like this, uh, and it's not complete as you were seeing with DC. Well, you convert that to the next dollar, you put paying money, are you as you are for Call of Duty, the Call of Duty game, the sports game coming out, you were paying so much money for better quality, now they're lowering the price and you're getting crap. Yeah, basically, that's exactly what you're getting. Like uh, Resident Evil Revelations that just came up, mm -hmm. you know. I feel cheated because it's a four-part series. Yeah, it's like episodic. Like back in the day, even when the PlayStation was out, mm -hmm. like when Resident Evil first came out, you didn't have uh, you know download the content or you had to put another CD in to buy it. Like maybe a couple of months after you finish playing this game <laughs> to finish the actual game. Yeah, everything was already printed on that CD to enjoy your game experience. Yep. you know. 
And today is, I mean, we're getting cheated. You're paying thirty nine dollars for a game, then you're paying an additional, like maybe uh, between ten and twenty bucks for the additional content to beat the game. Mm -hmm. And look at uh, like Call of Duty. That's a that's a major thing. You know, you're paying basically like eighty four dollars for a game to get a to get a uh, to get a game with a C, uh, DLC and all that stuff, which is already in the game. You mentioned it before on many episodes back. You already got all this stuff in the game. They offer these DLCs and stuff like that. It should be included with that uh, original purchase price with the game. I just, I don't know. What do you think, Q? It's crazy, huh? Let me pose this to you. What made you want to start doing these speed runs? Well, I wanted a challenge. I was in the middle of, since like earlier, I was in the middle of the with the generation of the games. Here. Even later PS3 titles. I mean, early PS3 titles, lots of the but later on, it just got, uh, man, this is just like this game. Oh, Judy, uh, I, I pick up this game. Oh, my biggest gripe is oh, Judy, Black Ops, Black Ops. They look bloody identical. And you're paying $60 for base DLC, which could have been personal. They had room to put that on the disc. Mm -hmm. They don't do that. You are. And with the older games, I found, um, just kind of help them. To get fast, my very first game I speak on was Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. And it just, a, a crap game, but the first time I got hooked on it, just kept playing and playing, and I jumped into Zelda and it just took off. So, out of all that old school uh, game, and I'm posing another question, what's your favorite of all time so far? Probably the two games I speed run the most Castlevania and Legend of Zelda. Those are some great games. I've got 4,500 attempts. Uh, Wow. How do you have the time? <laughs> um, well, a lot of those attempts I'm reset within the first minute because you have to get a bomb drop off of one of the uh, dark times. And if you don't get the bomb drop, you have to reset it within the first 50 seconds. Oh, oh okay. So you got this down to a science yes. then, basically. What can the industry do to make gaming more fun? Um, to put more in the gameplay and take away from the graphics. <laughs> Everybody cares about gameplay instead of how playable it is. The order you were saying, it looks good, but I think it's crap. <laughs> right. Dead or Alive came out this month, and Dead or Alive looks like a, a polished P3 game. Yeah, because that's all it is. It's just upscaled it a little bit, and it's the same game. And they might add one or two more costumes. That's that DLC stuff we're talking about. To make it look, I guess, more attractive to us. But it's the same game. You remember um, SOCOM on PS2, right? Yes. Okay. For me, there's no game since SOCOM that even came close. Not graphically, because it's, you know, it's not a real graphic right. power game. But the fun that you have playing that game, I don't know why, but there's no other game that comes close to match how much fun you had playing SOCOM. Mm -hmm. Harold, what system are you primarily on? Um, the NES. NES. Wow. So you said, I, I heard, you do still have an Xbox One, right? Yes. So how much time do you put in on your Xbox One? Um, in the past uh, six months, probably three hours. That's because I'm bloody over. We're playing some in 2K15. Hey, three hours. Uh, now, I got to say, I do put a lot of hours in my Xbox One. That's only because my cable box is hooked up. That's <laughs> One other fact that I want to touch up about new versus old. Doug, check this out. Um, here is for standard NES, yeah. right? I can take this, speed up, and do whatever I want to throw it everywhere. But, I take... This is a media new games. Come on, see these. I mean, you can see right here, they shattered. There's no protection for it. And I'm backing that up later. But, you know, <laughs> there's no protection for this stuff. They just break so easy. Yeah. It's, you know, games, so durable. Part of this. It went wrong in this direction. Uh, I think you're right with that. So, since you mentioned that, do you think that gaming should come uh, to be like this cloud storage or they should take away from physical media and just have it downloaded on your system? Just streaming. Um, 
No, I still think a physical copy is needed, but maybe a different media than CDs, because CDs do not last forever. Right. They really don't. These cartridges are all this years old I have, and they still work just like the day you got them. But I got some disc over for my PS2 to play. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Any type of little smear or scratch, it's done. It's a done deal. Yeah. Flash drives, I think that's a good way to go. You know, flash drive, SD, the same principle they're doing with the Nintendo DS. Those little things are just hell. Yeah. That would be good, to put it on a, on a flash drive. Mm-hmm. Because I still have, just to go back to old stuff, I still have my old uh, Game Boy, and that stuff still works like it's brand new. Put a cartridge in there, it still oh, works, yeah. no problem. And I'm like, wow. It, it seemed like back then they really built stuff to really last. And now they just try to build it the cheapest and fastest way possible. Yeah. And these newer systems, the PS3, I've had three of them. I've had two dot. This NES over here is still the same one I got in 1985. God. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> everybody <laughs> that had an NES, we all had the same problem about. That's right. Going on so, yeah. did, you, did you ever have that problem with yours? Um, no. Uh, and the thing is, I took apart my NES and cleaned out the pin connectors and um, took a, a good way to clean the cartridge. You could take a Q tip, a little bit of Windex, mm-hmm. and, you know, clean here really good on both sides, a blow it high. And I can put this right here on my NES right now. Work. Dang. You know what? I think I never. Uh, <laughs> you got to put some time in it. Yeah, I, th- I don't think I never cleaned my uh, NES like that. <laughs> no. But I, I, oh, can, yeah. I can remember having to put two games in it just, just, <laughs> just to get it to work. <laughs> but, the spring, yeah. I mean, with all that, it was still a beefy console. It I mean, was. it was still a durable console. It was, you had to do something real dramatic for that NES to break down, or any of the older systems. Mm-hmm. I know Ataris and, and even Jaguars and, and uh, Commodore 64s, these, game, these gaming machines still work. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you get an Xbox 360, or you get a P3, you get the Red Ring of Death with the oh, blinking sh- light. I don't know about the Xbox 360, I had nine of them, so. Uh, yeah. What? what Xbox. The- <laughs> Yeah, I gave it back to nine. <laughs> the knock on wood, I only had two Xbox uh, 360s. How many Xbox Ones yet? Uh, just one for now. <laughs> and if that get broke, yeah. I'm, I'm going to Microsoft. So. Uh, I don't know broke down Xbox One. I have no idea the power supply. You can plug it into a search for it. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. See, I had, I had to get a new power supply. I had a problem with the, and well, I still have a problem with my day one edition. If I unplug the controller, it won't um, it, right. it won't talk to the console at all. I have to stay tethered, so I don't know what that. They came out with an update; they were supposed to fix it, but huh. it's still it's still not working. And I've had this issue since day one. Wow! See, you wouldn't have this problem on the old. <laughs> right. No, everything works. I mean, even the the original Xbox. You know, it, it was hard pressed to break that machine unless somebody. Like dropped it off the table or spilled water. Yeah, I, st- I still got mine sitting right here in the floor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean these these gaming consoles and these games. I, I'm just saying that the 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 people need to do better. These manufacturers need to do better. These companies need to do better. The gaming yeah. industry needs. And they always they always say bigger is better. But you know, you take one of the most underrated consoles right here, Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Small and it's you. Mm-hmm. I still had my Dreamcast, but unfortunately somebody had threw it away. <laughs> but I had, I had regained my Dreamcast, and the only problem that I have with that is just the date. Mm-hmm. The, 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 um, the internal battery uh, goes out, yeah. so I have to reset it every now and then. But other than that, it plays fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got what uh, Ready to Rumble, Ready to Rumble 2, and Hydro Thunder on it. And I still love playing those games. I'll pop that in instead of playing my PS4 or my Xbox One. So, um, just final verdict. Uh, again, what do the gaming industry need to do to try to get our generation back into the swing of things? They need to put a lot more variety in their games. Uh, not focus so much on the person should their sport. You know, get back into platform, get back to RPGs. I know it's an RPG coming from the Xbox One Final Fantasy 15, but other than that, you know, there isn't a 
clutch, and RPG is such a big market. Mm -hmm. And if they would just broaden their horizons, focus what the little 13, 14 year boys are going to want to play on Call of Duty and cuss out their buddies, which is all they ever do on the Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a lot of immature people get on these game systems and they, you know, they just make it not a real fun experience to be on there. Yeah. You know, I think they should have like age restricted rooms. You know, that's not like, a bad idea. Like let adults play with adults mm. and let kids play with the kids. Yeah. You know, because they they come in and they're very disrespectful mm. and they just take a, a fun a lot of fun away from the game. Maybe that's something that they could do right. again. Cause I, I I don't like playing Call of Duty and I and I'm sitting up here and I'm playing with like maybe a thirteen year old and he's maybe either blasting music through the air set or he's just cursing up a storm. Now I mean I can curse with the best of them, right. but sometimes you know you're just in that mode where you just want to chill, have fun, play you, know, you want to play with your peers, yeah. you don't want to feel like you know you're babysitting somebody's kid. Mm -hmm. You know I, I mean it's just. You know, I, I wish they would do something like that. That's Age restricting idea, rooms would would be good. That'd be nice. That would be good. How they would do that, I don't know, but age restricted rooms may be one thing they can do. That's a good idea. I like that. Alright. Um, one thing before we leave, uh before we let you go. Um, your prediction of E three this year, what do you think this one will <laughs> come up? Um, oh, uh, put me on the spot on that. Uh, uh, I'm very indifferent right now. I, I think uh, one thing that is contact you guys didn't hear, Rock Band 4, yeah. Yeah. New Regen Systems, that's going to be a hit to bring it back after all these years. And plus, um, I think it's going to be a good, I think that's going to be a full hit. And I'm not it could be time for another God of War. Yeah, and I heard about that on the last, uh, I don't know if it was last E3 or either the Tokyo show. They actually confirmed they was doing something. So we saw many pictures mm -hmm. leaked and everything, but that wasn't really God of War 4 or something like that. But they might, you, if you don't see nothing this year, you'll definitely see something next year, I think, for God of War 4. Oh, yes. Yeah, I do know they're coming out. Uh -huh. I, I do know that they're coming out with the Oculus. Yeah, they definitely. Before the end yeah. of the year. Mm -hmm. That's what they promised. Um, the Morpheus, the PlayStation virtual headset, uh, they said early next season. year. Yep. So, me, I'm always hoping that Sega would get back into <laughs> the gaming world and announce a Dreamcast 2. I, don't, I really don't think that's going to happen because the third party is the way they're going. I think Nintendo... Is going to be headed to third party soon because I just see I see the trend. They're trying to make these games enjoyable, just like this Wii U. So who's really playing the Wii U? What they have on that Smash Bros. It's not the same as it was back in the past. The gameplay it just really isn't there for me. I I don't know. Well, uh, they are bringing out the new Zelda Wii U. That that's going to move a lot of consoles, I think. But they need to do better with their releases, I think, in order to stay in the game. Yes, I, I think they should have brought Zelda out. Before now, yeah, they should have because um, the Wii U is not getting any type of third party games, they, they're, they're not just getting the, their first party game because a lot of people have dropped them, like Ubisoft. Ubisoft said they're not making no more stuff for Wii U like that. Remember with the Watch Dogs or whatever? And Watch Dogs did come out this year, but it was no, it came out last year, mm -hmm. but a little too late, yeah, in my too late, no. yeah. And yeah, they so. did when the Wii U first did come out, they came strong with Call of Duty, yeah. They did come out with that, mm -hmm. but then third-party companies just stopped, just dropped them. Start falling out the wayside. Not a lot of good titles on the Wii. Yeah. Uh, but one good title, Batman Arkham City, that one, the best editions on the Wii U. Yeah. I did really enjoy that game on PlayStation 3, the Arkham City. I can honestly tell you and count on my hands how many times I played my Wii U and my Wii. <laughs> I mean, it, it got to the point where it was so dusty, and I had to do a rack of updates when I had turned it on, and this was last week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't get Smash Brothers, and I didn't get uh, oh, Mario Kart. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't really play it. it. It just sat there, you know, from the first time. Yeah, I, think I, I, I think I got two weeks. Mm. Uh, it's I dusty, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs>
couple. I have a couple, but I, I don't play them. I'll play the Nintendo, but right. not the Wii U. It's make me wish I had my Nintendo, man. I'm going to play that job, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, we're going to wrap it up, but thank you for joining the okay, show, man. Earl. Um, like I said, he's ranked number three in the world for the Zelda runs and ranked number seven in the world for Castlevania. And if they want to see you live on Twitch, where should they go, Harold? Okay, my Twitch name, don't jump when you hear it, but my Twitch name is Can't Out Fat Me. Mm -hmm. That is my Twitch name. <laughs> and my YouTube is The, with the number one, and only Big H. Okay. Okay. Oh, are you planning to do any more speed runs on any of the uh, NES games? Uh, um, other, um, there's a couple I'm working on right now off stream. I've been sort of working on Castlevania 2. And also, um, I am there's one on the Sega Genesis I want to learn. It's called Light Crusader. It's another crappy game, but I just want to learn it. And I've been practicing that as well. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so... Thank you for joining the show. We want to thank uh, Quincy yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> we really didn't say too much, but thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> All right. we'll, we'll see you again next time. Oh, we want the fact the game show. <laughs>